Hey guys, Daryl Addison at torpedopot.com. Daryl Addison at torpedopot.com. And we're about to uh, start a new planting season. We uh, put some peas in these planters, about 30 to 50 peas in these planters. And they grew successfully into, I would say approximately 600 pods. And each of the pods have about five peas in it. So I would say about 3,000 peas. So 30 in each planter times 10 is 300 turns into 3,000. That's a huge multiplication. So right now we're about to go in because we want to plant green peppers. I want to show you what we do when we are putting in a new crop. You don't necessarily have to do this. It depends how compact your soil is. For instance, in some of our planters, what we normally do is go in and we turn the soil over just to get a feel of the soil and turn it over. And I wanted to show you this particular pot because we didn't put any worms in here. But you're gonna find out that a lot of the essentials for growing your plants are already in your soil, okay? Anytime I see a, a worm in my soil, that means that they're at home. If they're at home, that means my the ecology surrounding this planter is sufficient for growing your plants. Anytime you can host living organisms, it is a good thing. Now, with that being said, there's only a certain amount of organisms you want growing in your planter. You don't want bacteria growing over the top of your planter. Uh, you don't want to see any slime mold. You don't want to see any of that stuff. But because we had 15 days of rain, decay is gonna take place and fungus is going to grow. And I'm so happy to see this type of fungus because at the top of the planter, as you can see, this is mildly dry. We don't water at the top, but all of the rain has caused the fungus to start to grow. These are the fruiting bodies of the fungus. The fungus is actually deep down into the root system, but these are the upper bodies to let you know that that fungus is there. Now, we don't water at the top again, but because of all the rain, this fungus has taken an opportunity to multiply and grow inside of this planter, and I love it. Because guess what? I don't use fertilizers to grow my plants. I use the natural environment, the fungal communities, the bacterial communities, the balance within the living organisms to actually start developing and grow my plants, and I love it. And as you can see, Mr. Wormy has digged his way back down into his little boat right there and he found his way and so that's what we're going to do when i go and uh put in new plants in my planter i try to turn over as much as possible okay you don't have to turn over everything as much as possible for some of you all you have to do is drop your seeds in put a layer of soil over it and that should be it but i wanted to have my feeding stick exposed because i want to be able to put some more soil on top of it to even it out and level it out. So you don't have to worry about aeration in a torpedo pot because nothing's ever compacted because we never compacted the soil. With the living organism, there is no compact. The root system has the ability to go through it, the soil real easy and pull itself out. And that's exactly what you do. You just go in and you just pull the plants out. Now, the question is, Mr. Ashton, do we need to go down and get all the pieces of, of the branching and everything else out of this plant? No, you don't. As a matter of fact, in most cases, sometimes you can use this, leave this branching inside of there because it provides food and it's already developed and, um, an environment for the new um, plants, the seeds or plants you're going to put in there. So we know that now the fungus is already developed inside of this planter. So I don't have to try to add any amendments, any soil amendments, anything else. All you have to do is simply do your job and look at the life that comes out. We haven't even touched the soil yet, turned it over yet. But yet, all of these living organisms are doing their job and they're doing it so effectively. I know a lot of you don't like worms and I'm sorry for picking it up for some of you. But I wanna let you know, that's how you know your food is healthy. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to do anything. So I'm gonna pull up my, my stick now. See, how it's not even that deep below the soil, is it? And one of the reasons why is because it's, we've already had a growing season. Wow, look at this, you got a number of these little ants inside of here, living organisms inside of your planter. That's amazing. And they're just doing their little thing. I love these. Look at them. All right, so this is what's going to happen now. <clears throat> All of these organisms are naturally inside of your planter. You don't have to add them. You don't have to do anything. Fungus is already here. Living organisms are already here. There's a lot of things taking place in natural soil to make it as fertile as possible. 
I'm going to take these sticks out, as you see, because they once were holding up the peas. Now I'm going to take them and switch into my tomato plants. And because I don't need them here, my peppers can grow. Their stalks are pretty strong. They don't need to be to be uh, to be supported in any way. All right, I just wanted to run this by you, <clears throat> let you take a look at what's going on. So I'm going to come and uh, take all of these planters, uh, clean them out as much as possible so they get at least like this. I love to leave the root systems and everything else in there. They're pretty much embedded. Um, now you have to be very careful now because I'm glad I mentioned that last statement because if you have something that's really prolific like kale and I'm going to put in some um, some Hungarian peppers, you don't want that competition. So you, your soil is so fertile and so great that you have to be careful that your plants don't start growing again. Remember now, we took these plants out before they were dead, their life cycle. They were still producing peas but yet we took it out because we want to be able to put our Hungarian peppers in. Okay, so when I leave these peas in here, because of the soils being so fertile and so alive, that they'll still continue to produce. And I don't think we want that. I don't want to compete one with another. So be careful about your seeds. When you, <clears throat> once you feel that uh, that season is over with, if you leave that root system in there, it's going to compete. So be always be mindful of that. So, all right, I'm going to continue pulling these out and I'm going to put uh, my Hungarian peppers in. Once we get the plant, uh, the planter leveled out, then I will um, take a video of us putting the seeds in so you can take a look at it. And then we'll see how they grow together. And trust me, some of the peas will continue to grow, but because of this hot season, I don't think they're going to, uh, to last very long. Peas are a very cool weather plant, and they do very well. Daryl Addison, torpedopot.com. Daryl Addison, torpedopot.com.